we're down the bottom end of the plot and I think it's about time I made a start on rejigging this bean frame. The overall plan is to rip all this out completely and start by reconstructing the soil frame out of upturned pavers. But the one consideration and concern I've got is this birdhouse here. I'm not 100% sure if it's occupied and with the birds sitting on eggs. So rather than look inside, I'm going to leave it for a day or two, just observe it and then we'll take a look maybe later on. In the meantime, I can start working down the bottom. This area has been totally neglected since the last harvest of beans around about September last year. As you can see, it's well encrusted with different types of weeds. So that's going to be the first job, I think. I may even take the supporting canes down first, but then I'll give this a good thorough weeding. It's amazing what just tacking the framework down, the difference it makes. But as you can see along here, these uh, scaffold boards have just about had it now. I think this would have been their seventh year, so they've done six growing years, which I suppose is not too bad. Now I've got this unenviable task of weeding this. I'm not going to race it, I'm going to do it thorough so that the bed when it is refreshed with new compost and soil, won't be thrown any more up. Around this time of year, I'm not sure how well the gardeners feel, but I find it like a, like a bit of game of Tetris, where you're trying to shuffle stuff from one side to another to make room. Now, in the last clip you probably saw, I've started the runner bean bed. I've got most of the structure down on there, I've just got the weeding to do. So to get rid of the monotony, I've moved into this a lot my greenhouse and the job in here at the moment is to just clear it I've got a lot of plants in here I can move out and to do that the coal frame you may recall I've got buckets of um, daffodils in well I've moved those up <laughs> to another bed that's freed the coal frame up so now I'm going to move the brassicas and the onions into the coal frame as a final hardening off and to do that, when I'm doing that, I'm just still doing a little stock check just to check if there's any plants failed while they've been in here. So that's today's job. Another reason I need to get the other coal frame built this one's jam packed now and I've still not got everything in. Just show you what I've got in the car frame at the moment. These are the brassicas. As you can see, some of the leaves are starting to go a little bit yellow. I think most of the nutrients have gone out of the soil. So I'm going to give these a very, very weak nitrogen feed and hopefully that'll pick them up. Mixture here of cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts and kohlrabi. Then we move on to the onions. These lot here are the onion sets but the stuff at the back that there is um, all done from seed. There's a mixture of Kelsey, Robinson, Robinson Red and right down the front here we've got a couple of small trays of Zabrun and Long Red Florence and a few pots to finish off there. These are the lick leeks and there's a mixture of mussel butter and the two round pots are one called Leon. Now that we've got the coal frame sorted out I'm going to start 
having to clear out in this area. I've already started. It's amazing how much junk you accumulate over the years and uh, trays, pots, bits of wood that's going to come in useful. <laughs> and uh, what I'm doing, I'm putting it all aside in separate piles and that will be recycled down the tip where it's not going to be used on here. Weather's a bit funny today, although it's forecast a decent day. We've already had a couple of intermittent showers. Nothing to write home about, but it's still uncomfortable to work in, so I'm just dashing in and out as it is. In the meantime, I'm going to crack on with this. I'll probably do a bit of weeding as well. And I'll bring you back a bit later on to show you what we've done. Right, I've got most of the plants out now. It's just a matter of sorting out what I want to keep. And what's going to go down the tip. Potatoes there, the, the one and only first earlies I've done. Them are the Swift in that felt bag, if you remember. Someone did warn me about these, that uh, they do dry out quickly in those felt bags, and boy, <laughs> I'm watering these probably on a daily basis. We're going for a little rainstorm, come down with a vengeance, not long ago, and uh, most welcome. Looking at them skies, I think it's in for the day. So I'm gonna pack the greenhouse in for today because I've been putting stuff outside. I've had to bring it back in. I'll just quickly show you the borders cleaned up, cleaned up nicely. Need to still get a few more loose items out. <laughs> One thing I want to show you, and that's a bit embarrassing really, these tubs here. And there, these are actually potatoes that I put in for Christmas. And I actually forgot to harvest them. And there, they've started sprouting again. So what I may do is leave them in. The reason these are flattened is because the first early that I planted earlier, they was on top of this bucket and it's flattened the, the homes. But I'm going to leave them, see what happens. So that might be a little bonus crop for us. Plants are dead outside. I've given them a good watering in the rain. I've just fetched those back. And hopefully I'm going to try and find a place in the garden that I can plant these out now because so them starting to go a bit pale I think they've took all the nutrients out of the food I'm just having a bit of a clear out around this area now unfortunately I'm unable to do one area at a time because it's moving one thing from another there's about five dustbins, wheelie bins I've actually moved here with composting spent coffee grounds leaf mould, a bit of everything so, the job for today, I think, is we'll try and clear this area out here. And uh, I, I might try and consolidate one of the manure bins, because I've still got all the cow manure down the bottom to do. Anyway, we'll see what happens. The sun's shining. Let's crack on. This big cover here is like a cupola off a roof, domed roof. I've decided what I'm going to do with this is the IBC tank you can see behind me here. That's going to be repositioned slightly, probably move a little bit more that way. And I'm going to build a little structure so that this is upside down on the top of there. Put a little hole in and this will be a great way of catching rainwater to go straight into the IBC. I'm just inside my large compost bin now. This here is horse manure and it's been in a good two years. I've taken some off but most of this is well over two years, particularly at the bottom. A bit of a crust on at the top but once you dig down it's really good stuff. It's about two metres long, a metre wide and it's probably a good one and a half metres deep. So there's a good volume of compost in here. I'll just take the top off and show you so have a look at this. Oh, so to wait, the worms are coming up. <laughs> this is lovely stuff, and uh, put it through a sieve. Great compost, and say it's lovely for top dressing as well. So you're in the compost bin with me now. The white stuff you can see there is mycorrhizal fungi, naturally occurring and say it's because it's been there for a while. There's the fork. Now the plan is I've got a, another bay this side with probably about, I don't know, 
half a metre depth of compost still in there. So what I'm going to do is actually fork that right the way out into here and then that bay there I'll be topping that up completely right to the top with the camera now. So here we are, I'll just get a quick spin round on that allotment as you can see. I'm up quite high. <laughs> Starting to get somewhere now. These uh, pavers, these slabs, are going to be used eventually for remaking the beds when the scaffold boards rot. Now, getting back to this now, is this compost bin. So, this has got about half a metre of depth, and that there is going to go into the bay next door. I'll just show you this. Um, normally, on my compost bins, I used to have a, a, a restraining bar going across the top to stop the boards from splaying out. But I found that got in the way when I was digging out. So what I've done now, I'll put this bit of wire on with a screw in the top. And when I want to get into it, I just lift it off. Out the way, that makes it clear. And when I've finished, I can just pop it back on again. Right, let's get shoveling. It's amazing how much the manure does compact down when you get on top of it and of course allows you to get more in <laughs> that bay has leveled down quite nicely and I can get another at least 30 centimetres in the top of there before we come into this one this one is completely empty and I'll be full now of cow manure just to show you the sides on here these are just PVC and that there's black polythene. These, um, I should say again, I think it was six or seven years old and still in good nick. No signs of rotting anyway. It's really done the job well. When I first dumped this cow manure in September, I think it was, I knew that I'd have to move it again. So this bed was destined to be for the parsnips and to prevent all the richness going into the soil, which I don't want for parsnips, I put this black polythene down in anticipation and I'm glad I did. So the main task, first of all, is to clear this bed and then we'll have a look underneath because I'll probably be sowing parsnips within the next week or two. <sighs> Nearly cleared that first bed up there. And when I have done, I'm calling it a day for today. I think I've deserved a beer tonight. The first bed is completely cleared now, two more to go. I've stacked it up high and there's probably enough room in here to get at least another two, three maybe barrows of the next load, but that's going to be tomorrow. It's been hard work, but I've really enjoyed today. Been turned out to be a glorious day, although the start of the day we did have a uh, hailstorm, <laughs> believe it or not. But I like to come out here and have a look, and actually, when I've finished at the end of the day, actually see what I've done and see the difference. And I certainly can today, especially with this and the cleared bed up there. So, weather permitting, join me back on there tomorrow. <laughs> see you later.